I have been friends with Laurel Investment for several years. We've worked together for several years. Um, I'd glad also to see Ms. Silver joining us today. We worked with her for several years as well. Um, just recently, I've had the privilege of joining a ministry called Word Sower International. And I've been looking at their ministry for um, several years. Uh, I saw them on the internet um, presenting scripture from memory um, dramatically. And it blew me away, tracked down the ministry. One of the guys uh, who's now sort of a mentor of mine, uh, he, uh, I think he said he has something like 21 books of the New Testament memorized word for word. He's working on finishing the New Testament and starting on as much as he can of the old. Um, another fellow word sower who's the director in India, Kantharo, um, I've had the privilege of talking with him. Asked him, how, how, how much have you got? And uh, yeah, I believe he said he's working on his 20th book right now, the book of Romans. And um, I'm still blown away. I'm so honored to be a part of the ministry. They started back in 1974, Jason and Sharon Nightingale um, started moving kind of from theater to just presenting the word of God dramatically, word for word. And they did that for years, especially focused on the book of Revelation. And um, then they had... The, the privilege of going overseas and seeing some orphans and widows and loving on them and holding them and seeing uh, kind of the situation that they were in. And they just got a heart to branch out and become Words Over International. And so there's sort of a twofold part to the ministry. Um, one part is the evangel arts, which is the part that I'm associated with. And, and um, we as scripture tellers memorize books of the Bible to share them so that people can hear the word of God in um, a new way, in some ways a little closer to the way they would have heard it in the early church anyway. Everybody didn't have their own copy of the scripture, so they got together and would hear it read um, to encourage others to memorize. But then we also uh, take up a, a love offering that goes to the international part of the seas. And they have um, basically in several different countries, uh, India, uh, Haiti, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, they have orphanages where they take care of orphans, they support widows in countries where orphans and widows really cannot support themselves. They rely on support from other people. Um, they have training grounds where they train pastors, where they uh, teach the children, not just normal kind of instruction as we would think of it, but teach them the Bible and disciple them. Um, they also partner with a ministry in Nepal that fights child trafficking. Um, and so it is a wonderful, wonderful ministry where there's sort of that, that combination of sharing the word and then taking up an offering um, to try to honor James 1, that uh, pure and undefiled religion before God the Father is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained from the world. And so I'm privileged to be here with you today. Um, I am going to be sharing with you uh, the book of Philippians. Um, it is an amazing book, especially following such great worship and praise and talking about rejoicing. I thought that was amazing that you started by talking about that, since that is probably one of the biggest themes in Philippians. If you listen to what Paul is saying throughout, um, several times in that book he talks about rejoicing uh, and, and joy and all of those things. And so... Um, my hope for you today is that you'll be blessed through hearing the word. Um, I sometimes have people who want to follow along. Sometimes people just want to listen. I'm okay with either one. Uh, I will be quoting from the Christian Standard Bible. Um, any variation from there is just a slip of memory, which happens on occasion. But uh, Father, we thank you for this time right now that we have to hear your word, to get into your word. God, we ask that you would let your word come in a new way. Uh, every time we hear it, God, that we would be washed by it, that we'd be cleansed by it, that we would learn something new, that we would grow closer to you through your word. Father, I ask that you would just bless me to be able to remember it and to uh, present it as close as possible to the way Paul would have written his letter to the Philippians. Yes. God, that you would open my mouth, that you would open everybody's ears and hearts to receive and respond to be blessed by your word. And we thank you for giving us the word and the freedom to worship here. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, I give thanks to my God for every remembrance of you, 
Always praying with joy for all of you in my every prayer because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Indeed, it is right for me to think this way about all of you because I have you in my heart and you are all partners with me in grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how deeply I miss all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And I pray this, that your love will keep on growing in knowledge and every kind of discernment so that you may approve the things that are superior and may be pure and blameless in the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually advanced the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone else that my imprisonment is because I am in Christ. Most of the brothers have gained confidence in the Lord from my imprisonment and dare even more to speak the word fearlessly. To be sure, some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. These preach out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely thinking that they will cause me trouble in my imprisonment. What does it matter? Only that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is proclaimed. And in this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice because I know that this will lead to my salvation through your prayers and help from the Spirit of Jesus Christ. My eager expectation and hope is that I will not be ashamed about anything, but that now, as always, with all courage, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For me, to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Now, if I live on in the flesh, this means fruitful work for me. And I don't know which one I should choose. I am torn between the two. I long to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. Since I am persuaded of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith, so that because of my coming to you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus may abound. Just one thing. The citizens of heaven, live your life worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or am absent, I will hear about you that you are standing firm in one spirit, in one accord, contending together for the faith of the gospel, not being frightened in any way by your opponents. This is a sign of destruction for them, but of your salvation, and this is from God, for it has been granted to you on Christ's behalf, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you were engaged in the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I have. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and mercy make my joy complete by thinking the same way, having the same love, united in Spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look out not only for their own interests, but also for the interests of others. Adopt the same attitude as that of Christ Jesus, who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be exploited. Instead, he emptied himself by assuming the form of a servant, taking on the likeness of humanity. And when he had come as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, 
just as you have always obeyed, so now, not only in my presence, but even more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may be blameless and pure. Children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation among whom you shine like stars in the world by holding firm to the word of life. Then I can boast in the day of Christ that I didn't run or labor for nothing. But even if I am poured out as a drink offering on the sacrificial service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. In the same way, you should also be glad and rejoice with me. Now I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I too may be encouraged by news about you, for I have no one else like-minded who would genuinely care about your interests. All seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know his proven character, because he has served with me in the gospel ministry like a son with a father. Therefore, I hope to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. I am confident in the Lord that I myself will also come soon. But I considered it necessary to send you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker, and fellow soldier, as well as your messenger and minister to my needs, since he has been longing for all of you and was distressed because you heard that he was sick. Indeed, he was so sick that he nearly died. However, God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but also on me, so that I would not have sorrow upon sorrow. For this reason, I am very eager to send him, so that you may rejoice again when you see him, and I may be less anxious. Therefore, welcome him in the Lord with great joy and hold people like him in honor because he came close to death for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up what was lacking in your ministry to me. In addition, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To write to you again about this is no trouble for me and is a safeguard for you. Watch out for the dogs. Watch out for the evil workers. Watch out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the circumcision, the ones who worship by the Spirit of God, boast in Christ Jesus, and do not put confidence in the flesh. Although I have reasons for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he has grounds for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness that is in the law, blameless. But everything that was a gain to me, I have considered to be a loss because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them as dung, so that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. Not that I have already reached the goal, or am already perfect, but I make every effort to take hold of it, because I also have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let all of us who are mature think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this also to you. In any case, let us live up to whatever truth we have attained. Join in imitating me, brothers and sisters, and pay careful attention to those who live according to the example you have of us. For I have often told you, and now say again with tears, that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. 
Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. They are focused on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. We eagerly wait for a Savior from there. The Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humble condition into the likeness of His glorious body by the power that enables Him to subject everything to Himself. So then, my dearly loved and longed for brothers and sisters, my joy and crown, in this manner stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I urge you, Odia, and I urge Syntyche to agree in the Lord. Yes, I also ask you to partner to help these women who have contended for the gospel at my side, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord, always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything. But in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, yeah. present your request to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, my brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is commendable, if there is any moral excellence, and if there is anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. Do what you have learned and received and heard from me, and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, because once again, you renewed your care for me. You were, in fact, already concerned about me, but lacked the opportunity to show it. I don't say this out of need. I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. I know both how to make do with a little, and I know how to make do with a lot. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in need. I am able to do all things through Him who strengthens me. Still, you did well by partnering with me in my hardship. And you Philippians know that in the early days of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you alone. For even at Thessalonica, you sent help for my needs several times. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the profit that is increasing to your account. But I have received everything in full, and I have an abundance. I am fully supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you provided, a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me send you greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. And thus ends Paul's letter to the Philippians. Amen. It is an amazing book. The more that I read it, the more that I, I dwell on it and memorize it, the more it just jumps out. And Paul, just for a little background on it very quickly, he was writing from prison, awaiting death, probably by beheading. And I know that in my own life, there are so many times where I think it's like, my life is so hard right now. I've got so much going. We rejoice in the Lord always. But you just don't know what I'm going through. I've not been in prison awaiting death by beheading. <laughs> and Paul can say however many times throughout this book to rejoice, to not worry about anything, to be thankful. And it sort of makes you hit a point where you look and go, I, I really don't have anything to compare with what Paul was going through. And the amazing thing about memorizing the Word of God and hiding it in your heart uh, is that it will come back to you. And, and that's both amazing and um, convicting. You start to get worried and God goes, don't worry about anything. I know. 
<laughs> um, but hiding the word in our hearts is such an amazing thing. And I would encourage everyone to, to do that, uh, to, to commit the scripture to memory. Um, whether it's individual verses, whether it's whole passages, chapters that mean a lot to you, whole books, um, the human mind is an amazing thing. And what better thing to memorize? I mean, we memorize lyrics to our favorite songs and things like that. What better thing to spend our time memorizing than the very word of God itself so that it can be with us at all times and can bless us and can touch our lives? Um, I appreciate your guys allowing me to come and, and share with you today. I pray that you were able to, to hear the word a little bit differently. Um, I believe that um, in just a moment, Preston's going to come and um, take a little love offering for Word Summer International. Please know that anything that you make out, anything that you give in the love offering does not go to me. It goes directly to Word Sower 100%. Um, there are two ways that you can do that. One is you could make out a check to Word Sower International. Um, uh, and that would be who you make it out to. Um, and then I will make sure that it gets to them. The other way that you have a website, it's wordsower.org. You can go there, you can also donate that way. And um, basically, if your name and address are either on the check or if you donate online, come January, it is a nonprofit organization. They will send out tax receipts as well um, for those who itemize and claim things that you've donated. Um, but again, every bit of it is going to go to support the orphans and widows overseas, the words of our organization. None of it, it goes to me at all. So, um, if you will, let me close with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for your word. Uh, we thank you that you tell us to rejoice always, and you tell us multiple times to remind us that no matter what is going on in our lives, really and truly, if we are saved, if we are following you, God, there is... No reason for us not to rejoice. And Lord, I pray that you would just help us to take the word to heart, to memorize it, to live it, um, as Paul says, to live up to whatever truth we've attained, and to live that out, to live our lives worthy of the gospel of Christ. God, I pray a blessing over this church and over member here, that as we leave today, that everyone would be blessed in going their ways, that your word would stick through us throughout the week, that we would live it and dwell on it. And again, God, we thank you for it, how blessed we are to have your word so easily accessible to us. And we pray for the countries that don't, that you would get the word in their language, that you would make it easier for them to get so that they too may grow to know you better. We give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. Did you get blessed this morning? Amen. It was good to be in the house of the Lord.